So for about three weeks, this project was pretty much at a standstill waiting for concrete. And I'm relieved to now have it in the ground. And it turned out pretty good. I'm going to grab the GoPro. I want to show you this footer a little closer. I didn't get to show you a good look at it anyway in the last video. Some of the stuff that turned out really good. Some of the parts of it that are not as good as they could be but are fine. And uh, then tell you my plans moving forward on this. It feels good to be at a point to where I'm not uh, waiting on somebody else, at least not completely anyway. So here in the back corner of the shop, the very back edge, this is the place where the ground is the lowest and where the freeze protection on this footer is at its uh, lowest point. So what I'm going to do is put a piece of foam insulation in the ground here between the, the footer and the earth just to give it you know, a little extra uh, protection here. Not that it probably needs it, but why not? It's got a good gap here and I've got the insulation and uh, couldn't hurt anything. I'm going to do it along this back corner as well. That's five foot exactly. Okay. So this is a piece of two inch insulation. My buddy Al brought me a uh, four by eight sheet of this. It has a R10 rating. So it should just hopefully fit down in there. It's kind of tight in this corner. I'll drive it down in there. It'll be all right. Just cut off that excess. Actually, don't need cut off. That'll work just fine as is. Well, I'm about to set these corner blocks. And before I start covering up this footer, I want to show you a good look at it. I mean, it filled really well. The forms did. I'm really pleased with the with the way that uh, that grout mix performed. It kind of flowed in really well. There's a couple spots that uh, that have some voids in it, but they're just superficial. They're nothing that's going to hurt anything. My forms did not bow, uh, which was nice. They held up really well. Never had the first problem with them, although that. That two inch line pump uh, wasn't all that fast, which was good in my in my uh, uh, situation because of those forms being not the heaviest ever was. I'm lined out on my footer for my block. Got my blocks counted out and laid out to where I can hopefully run with these. Now the checked the footer with a laser, and it's. It's a little higher than what I wanted. Probably about, I don't know. You know obviously, it's going to vary some, but uh, it's on the high side of what I wanted, which I would have preferred it be on the low side because I'm going to have to have a thin bed of mortar on this first run, which is not that big a deal. But this is the worst spot of the whole footer, and uh, you know it doesn't go in more than an inch, inch and a quarter. So it's not a problem. It's where they had to pump the thicker mud in the steps, the thicker concrete in the steps in order to get it to stand up and not just run uh, out. A lot of people uh, that hadn't dealt with concrete and steps before uh, couldn't couldn't hardly grasp how this concrete was going to, you know, not just flow out because uh, concrete doesn't flow like water. Um, and in fact, the bottom of this step where I've got a void there ended at the very top of the lower run here so kind of counterintuitive i guess if you think of it uh, uh, similar to water but concrete doesn't act like that so you can see looks pretty good both sides all the forms come out relatively well i struggled with this one for probably 15 minutes or so to get it out but other than that um that's it 
and you could have left the forms in it wouldn't have made a bit of difference we're going back block i wouldn't want to leave them in on a wood structure because of termites but uh you know if you can get them out you might as well pull them out and that's what i wanted to do i did leave this one piece of metal in right here uh, just because I, I don't feel like digging it out that's it it looks good now i'm going to set my corner blocks I figured out what I need to tie into this wall and what block needs to start here in this corner and I'm gonna roll with it. So I have a block mason that's interested in laying these blocks but he's at least two weeks out from being able to get started on this thing and I'm all out of weight. I'm not gonna I'm not gonna wait two weeks before I start making some forward movement on this. So I plan to lay at least all the blocks that are gonna be below ground. I don't see why I couldn't couldn't do that although I won't be as fast as somebody who lays blocks for a living. I know where my corners need to be. I know what blocks need to start where in order to get tied into this existing back wall because that's going to be a concern. And it's not straight. This wall is actually tilted. But I'm confident that I can do it. I mean, I've played with blocks as a kid almost every day. And this is no different. So... on the money. So right now I'm using bag mortar. I prefer to get the raw ingredients and mix this stuff myself. But uh, everything's closed, and uh, this is all I can get at the moment. So I've got my corner block set, this one and the one on the other end. In my opinion, these are the most important blocks because everything gets built off of these. And I'll just start laying out where my verts go, mark them, and start drilling them out. And then we'll pull a string line in between this block and the other block and then lay this long course. Every 16 inches from that first cell, I will have a piece of vertical rebar. Uh, sticking up out of the foundation. I've just got a paint marker here, and it's going to be roughly four inches in uh, You know from the outside edge of the block so every 16 inches and four inches in Sixteen inches is around 40 or 41 millimeters, I believe. Mm -hmm. 
she's getting big. She looks good. She's hungry. She likes some peanuts. Won't be long, peanuts. You'll have to come in your little squirrel door. Because this place will be blocked up. Hmm? She's like, can she still fit through there? Oh, Mom. <laughs> yes, she can fit. She's, she'll just make it bigger. Yeah, she'll just make the hole bigger if she needs to. She says, she's here to, she says I'm here to supervise. Mm -hmm. Supervising the, the block placement. Are we staging these blocks good enough for you, Peanut, to meet your approval? For some reason, I just don't think she cares, actually. Yeah. I think she's just more concerned about eating than what's going on around here. She's like, as long as you're not making a whole bunch of noise, I'm good. Just throw me some peanuts. You look good, girl. You're big. A full-size squirrel. Yeah. Mm -hmm. Yeah, don't bite my arm. Bite mommy. <laughs> no, please don't bite me. No, she just never will. Hey. Hi, baby. Hi, baby. <laughs> you want to play, but I can't. Let me touch your butt. Let me touch your butt. <laughs> <laughs> She's wanting to play. Come on. She's too big to play, though. Yeah, yeah your little teeth are sharp. She shakes around you and calls you to death. <laughs> are you going to show my clothes? Hey. Go in. She's gonna get big. At least she's not hurting. She's no. just never. She's trying and then she's gonna laugh. She tries him. to be. No, she tries. No. They try to be I, nice. Okay. She tastes the blood and she just latches onto my arm. This <laughs> shark. <laughs> she's wiping her little face off me. Oh, she's smelling her neck. Your ear. <laughs> she's never went on his ear. <laughs> She's like, what do we got She goes, what is it, is it a peanut? Yeah. <laughs> is that a <laughs> peanut her, dangling like... off your ear? Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> she may pierce your ear if you're not yeah. careful, but I don't think so. <laughs> she, she didn't. <laughs> <laughs> I can hear her breathing when she was in my ear. <laughs> that was funny. She's like, mm. She's like, mm, you taste good. <laughs> I'm looking at pork rinds. <laughs> oh, She's like, my. what flavor are you? <laughs> well, see you, walnut That was peanut. the first time I've seen her do that. <laughs> see you, girl. So until today, I didn't own a hammer drill. The hammer drills that I'd been using around here were borrowed, and I had to return those. So I went and picked me up one of these Bosch uh, D-handle style drills. Now... We use this type at work on occasion, and they hold up pretty good. They're not the best, but they're not the worst either. They were running a special on these, giving away a dust extraction kit, or a dust extractor that hooks onto these drills. How good that is, I don't know. They were free, so we'll try it out anyway. I can see this being really handy if you're contracting and working in people's homes and stuff, or in your own home where you didn't want dust everywhere. So we'll see. Oh, and it's a nice bag. So I was just thinking that drills are not big enough already, and it's nice if you can have attachments to hook on your drill to make them more cumbersome. That pulls pretty good. Just a drill vacuum with a filter on it. Huh. Not a bad looking drill. These are actually pretty good uh, from my experience anyway. Depth stop. We'll be using that. The hammer hook. I guess you hook that on something. Right on your pant leg, or your pocket. So now all we need is a flashlight and a red dot sight, and this thing will be ready to drill some holes. <laughs> I'm just being cynical. Check out uh, how much uh, mass that thing adds to this. But if you were 
you know, it's a good deal for free, obviously. If you were head a line of these tools, you'd get you a battery and a charger, along with a drill if you didn't have one. I mean, it may just be some special they're running in my area, I don't know. But it, if this works well, it'll save me a little bit of cleanup when it comes to the hole prep, because I'm going to be epoxying my rebar in, and the hole's got to be cleaned anyway, so why not try this thing out? See how it works. This is the depth stop. It's adjustable. But I need at least six inches. So it'll be set all the way. Let's try it, see if it works. It works pretty well.
so I'm laying this first course and I'm finding that it's pretty hard for me to use a trowel and get the mortar down on the ground. It's a lot easier for me to use a trowel and put it on a block edge than it is for me just to lay it on a flat surface. So I'm using this. It's a grout bag. And I just cut the end off where it's larger. Uh, that way I can just put this in here, squeeze it out, and it's working pretty good actually. I'll show you. Hand me, I gotta get another block. So a viewer of the channel sent me a couple links to some videos of some guys laying block and they were using a grout bag similar to this, although it was it was much larger than this one. It held a lot more mortar. I can get two blocks out of this grout bag. And they were pretty quick with it after, you know, I'm sure 
years of experience. Uh, on Although I'm a little slow with it, I made far less mess using this grout bag. The mortar went pretty much exactly where I wanted it to go. And uh, it was just easier for me than trying to handle a trowel down in this trench with the rebar sticking up out of the footer. So even though I'm, a, I'm not as fast as some trained block layer, this block went down pretty quick actually in my opinion and uh, I was talking to my dad about it and he said you know who are you racing anyway Chloe, what's enough? No little bug fight. She's probably barking at a bug or something. Yeah. Come on. Ow! My fingers are under that glove. So that looks pretty good. I'm uh, pretty happy with it. I got to make sure that I don't accumulate any errors as far as my mortar joint. I do have some on this lower run that are thinner than others, so I'm going to have to pay attention to my height as well as my length. Uh, but I think I've got it as long as I don't, you know, keep uh, making the same mistakes over and accumulating errors. I think I'll be all right. Whoever done the block work on this building originally, in my opinion, done a pretty good job. The walls really straight. The mortar joints are all pretty even. So, I mean, you know, I don't agree with the way the building was built, but whoever laid these blocks laid them in good and straight. So I'm excited. 
at the progress that I've made. Two and a half late afternoons after work has got me to the point that you see here, which is pretty good in my opinion for a non-block layer. It's actually starting to rain. Everything that you see will be below ground or inside the shop. None of this will be visible because the floor level will come up to the tops of this block here. And uh, most of this will be below ground on the outside, so you won't see it except for in this back corner where the ground's a little uh, lower. Looking pretty good, I think. I am using wire in this. The wire that I'm using is the type that you set on top of the block. Just an alternative to the bond beam or rebar that runs horizontally in these. Uh, some people like it, some people don't, but I've got a, I've got a bunch of it, and that's what I'm going to use. Uh, seeing as this is going to be grouted pretty much solid, and it's what it's setting on, uh, and it's rebarred, I don't think it's going anywhere. I'm not concerned about it. So, if it turns out as good as it has so far, all the way to the top, I'm going to be, I'm going to be pleased with it. I'm not shooting for a perfect wall. I'm just shooting for a functionally uh, sound. Uh, sound wall one that's at least straight and this one appears to be really good at least uh, to my eye it does the camera may tell you different but it looks good in person and I'm happy that uh, this is moving along as good as it has I do have one mistake that I will admit to you uh, with that and I don't know how it occurred but I will tell you no matter uh, tell you anyway in this back corner I have a distance error uh, between this corner and the existing wall. Now this wall's crooked, and I don't know how I got this error, but there's going to be slightly larger mortar gaps um, on this wall here. It won't make any difference, and they won't even probably be... Uh, you won't even pick them out, probably, unless you knew to look for it. So I think everything's going to be perfectly fine, and it's starting to rain. So. There you go. A look at my block work, which you know, hasn't been... I haven't worked on these joints, so don't pick it apart too bad. You get the idea. It looks pretty good, and I'm happy with the progress that I've made. I'm excited to see this move forward. So before we go, I want to see if I can quickly and accurately convey my mental image of what this building's going to look like to you, uh, so you'll know where I'm going with this building as far as its reconstruction. Now this long wall is going to have a section of wood in the center. Front and the back will be blocked just like they were in the in the beginning, but this and the front or in the back are really non-load bearing walls. So they'd just be standing here. So my idea here is to go in at least three courses of block on this corner. So I have a full block corner all the way up to the top to support these end walls. Then from that section there, it'll be wood through the center of this long wall here. My floor will come out to about right here. I'll have two courses of block, one or two courses of block on top of that, and then it'll be wood from there up. And that'll give me quite a bit of room to put some really nice windows in. At least that's the thought. And what I'm looking for as far as windows, something that I've found is pretty hard to find actually, uh, at least in my area, is the old school crank out windows. What you'd see in a factory or literally an old school, at least where I'm from, that's what we had. Uh, crank out large sectioned glass windows, which were horribly energy inefficient, but this building is not energy efficient, so I don't guess it really matters to be honest. Now, I can't drive two hours, three hours to go get a couple windows. I have constantly have to work and uh, I just don't know. We'll see. Hopefully I can find something soon. If not, my neighbor actually has two really nice Pella double insulated glass uh, sliding doors that would make some great windows if you made some custom frames for it. Some nice fold out because I got a great view here when this tarp's gone I do that I want to really take advantage of and I want the natural light to come in. So I can have maybe a workbench on this long wall and be able to look out and uh, over, look out over the creek here and let some some air in. I think it'd be nice. We'll see. But that's it. I think hopefully that's a, somewhat of an accurate uh, description that you can understand the, what I'm going to do here. So thanks for watching, guys. I really appreciate it. Thanks to my viewers, patrons, and subscribers. Anybody who supported me on this project, it's much appreciated or supported me in my YouTube adventures at all. So that's it. Thanks for watching, guys, and I'll see you next time.